Get ready for a nerve-wracking night on the nation's power grid. This unforgiving heat has already created power outages, and already some people have been asked not to flip on that extra switch on the air conditioning. Officials warning that on this hot night, we're all in it together. And ABC's weather editor Sam Champion takes us around the country tonight. It's day five of this heat wave, and the effects of this relentless heat are taking their toll. The mercury hit 100 degrees in the New York City area, a record high for the day, and officials are expecting the heaviest strain on power demand in history. I've been concerned all week. You know, it's always not only what is happening, it's what could happen. They point out that if it's 100 degrees above ground, the temperature below ground where the power lines are could be more than 120. To reduce stress on the system during peak times, officials are asking businesses to take steps like raising thermostats and shutting down elevators. It's all the lighting, all the motors, all the pumps, all the elevators, all the computers with all of that air conditioning uh, uh, rolling at the same time. There have been outages today from Washington to Boston. Amtrak putting speed restrictions on trains, worried the tracks may expand in this heat. The combination of high daytime temperatures and high nighttime temperatures to blame. In Washington, D.C., it hasn't dropped below 80 degrees for more than 82 hours. In Philadelphia, construction slowed. Workers had to add special chemicals to stop the concrete from drying so fast in this high heat. And the heat is a concern for animals, too. At the Chicago Zoo, animals got a break with frozen snacks. And farmers concerned about heat stress on livestock now have an app for that. It measures the temperature and humidity of their environment and even counts the animals' breath per minute. And how about daytime dinner temperatures at 93 degrees, your heat index at 97 right here. So the big question is everybody wants to know, when does the heat break? And we've got the answer for you. Take a look at the cooler air dropping in with the jet stream right around the Great Lakes. So for the Great Lakes and into the Midwest, strong thunderstorms will probably start to kick this heat by the time we get into Friday, making it much better on Saturday. But look at the eastern seaboard and the mid-Atlantic. It takes those storms till Saturday to get in, cooling it down by Sunday into Monday. Maybe a 20 degree difference from where you're sitting at on Friday, but into the deep south, that heat wave rolls. The cold front doesn't reach you from Memphis south. Diane? But it is coming, and thank you, Sam.